Good morning and welcome to the program Perspectives on Invicta 98.9. And this morning, Perspective is going to look at what happened over the weekend in Kaduna. It, it has led to a curfew imposed on, you know, the, the, the capital, so to say. And of course, um, we're all going through it. But it started with looting. And there's no two words to put at what happened on Saturday when um, the young ones went on rampage, so to say. And it started looting uh, spaces that were said to be warehouses. And of course, it turned out to again individual, you know, uh, uh, houses and things like that. And uh, one thing that came out of it all was that um, yes, hunger in the land, and of course, disrespect for constituted authority. That was what we saw with all the things that went out. And of course, uh, it came down to uh, what were the things that were carted away? Uh, we saw palliatives, COVID-19 palliatives that were to be given out to the people and um they're not with the people they're in a storehouse why they're in a storehouse these are more are things that we'll look at this morning on the program perspectives and to share with me in this conversation i have with me in the studios emmanuel adu emmanuel adu is a public affairs analyst with me this morning in the studios emmanuel adu good morning and glad to have you here thank, thank you very much Tony. yes good morning uh listener good morning I'm going to start this program by taking a, a cue from what the daughter of the president, um, Zara Buhari, had said about uh, what was happening in some parts of the country, where she said she found her father exonerated in all of these. Yes, the government gave directives that this, these were, you know, palliatives that were donated by individuals, private organizations, and all of that to be given to the people, cushioning the effect of the lockdown. Now, uh, we're still, you know, with the, the COVID-19 is still a reality, still with us. And of course, um, there are signs that we, we may, you know, be going back to a second phase of it. I hope that, hoping that that does not happen. But government had made its intentions very clear that give to the people. So what happened along the space that uh, this did not get to the people? It ended up in warehouses, individual stores, so to say. And of course, if we from at <coughs> what happened at national space, we'll come down to the state level. That no, of course, no, I would rather start from where I live. Can yes, we we're going to take that. I, 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 I would let, rather let, put let, let me, the let, acting let, governor of Kaduna State. Let me come down yeah, with this. I, I agree with I you. I must come. I, I must okay. come down with okay. this. That it happened at the national space where government had given directive, and of course uh, we we'll see that. Uh, these directives were not, you know, taken to log logical conclusion. And then we come to the state. The government, too, had said these are the things to be done. And so government had done its own part. It was the responsibility of those that were involved in giving it out. So come back to where you are, where you resided. And uh, it started from there. And so, yes, about what happened. Moving forward, first and foremost... I want to commend the acting governor of Kaduna State, Dr. Hadiza Balarabi. I, you won't understand unless I, 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 I take you the whole hog. Uh, as I speak to you now, uh, the shites finally confirmed the rumors of the last uh, five days, a campaign of misinformation, which was the very first uh, uh, this thing the people wanted to use to unleash mayhem on Kaduna State. You know we have copycats everywhere. And uh, once they saw what happened in Lagos, uh, they were they were warming up for action in Kaduna. Unfortunately for us in Kaduna, unfortunately we support we support uh, the rights of uh, citizens to engage, to demonstrate, to ask questions. But of course, like you know, the right your right stops where my stats but like i said unfortunately for us in Kaduna state most times we have seen such protests degenerate into uh, religious taking religious taking tribal dimensions that's why Kaduna Kaduna state is always always a different pot, uh, kettle of fish and we are always very very careful so in the last few days there was that attempt to unleash mayhem on Kaduna State. The Zagzaki, the rumors of the death of Zagzaki did not fly. And then suddenly, 
the 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 issue of uh, see COVID, see COVID because it's corporate Nigeria, the Dangotes, the Tony Lewis and all that, the warehouse in Lagos reportedly uh, uncovered, and then uh, the citizens helped themselves to what was being stockpiled to be shared to the 36 states. Now, that started in Kaduna on a note that, oh, okay. And like I said in one of my Facebook posts, if you see that building in Gwari Avenue where they found items, that is not a warehouse. That is a building. It was holding Chukun local governments. Uh, that's the only local government as it were that has not been uh, shared in Kaduna State. And that is not Kaduna State. That's why you see I didn't want to go with the president's doctor's uh, post. Because she doesn't seem to have the full facts. It is not by government, federal government. It is by corporate Nigeria, the Dangotes, the Tony Ilumelus and all that. And for the benefit of listener, Kaduna State, if you remember, at the height of COVID, they were taking 20, the state government was taking 20% from the salaries of workers to be able to fund the palliatives for the vulnerable and for the very poor. The governor being a very compassionate person. And then the agenda of the state government, uh, 2015, 2019, 2023, putting people, people first. So once Kaduna State lifted uh, the lockdown, and people went back to work there was no need but ever mindful ever mindful that there might be a second wave and if you remember the crisis that we had the medical doctors were here uh, complaining that they were being taxed and the government said okay let's adopt a wait and see attitude if we have a second wave we have something to fall back on to help the very very vulnerable and when that was not happening these items had long been shared and in so, so many local governments as we speak now today the items are going to be delivered to the people the government had over the past three experiments of getting to meet to reach the needy the poor the vulnerable they have developed a template so that is where we are for the people good people of Kaduna state your governor is a man of integrity he is compassionate he is a man who would not i mean what 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 is there a campaign that he's keeping those stuff for none so like i started we want to thank the acting governor of Kaduna state for taking the steps that he took otherwise toy Kaduna would have bombed. So we are very, very grateful. And if you see the looting of private companies and of individuals on Gwari Avenue, the looting of NAVDAC, I was there yesterday. There's just no justification. And it confirms the security reports that there were plans to turn Kaduna upside down. What are people looking for in NAVDAC? People have, looters have made away with several thousand cartons of codeine that were seized and other dangerous drugs, other dangerous foods that have been confiscated because they are expired, they have been confiscated because they are fake. And this right there, some NAPDA staff did inform us that some of the people took some of the drugs right there and they instantly instantly they fell down so they were dragged away by their their families so if you look at the looting of Kaduna furniture company wakot and other businesses and a, a very good friend of mine in gwari avenue uh whose house was vandalized the deputy governor was there yesterday you would know that if madame governor did not act madame acting governor did not act Kaduna would have bond. So we want to thank her. It's important 
the good people of Cardinal thank Madame. She's done absolutely well. Emmanuel, Ado, yes. yes, I even even when I started it all, I, I was not putting any blame on government. I was saying that government had done its own from the national to the state, and you know that uh, it had you know taken care of its citizens by having those palliatives given out but let's look at another scenario as all of this is happening in kaduna state what we saw with you know when the uh, palliatives were given out um the governor himself had come out to tell the people that um yes there were you know gray areas uh, that some things were not taken care of but ne another time around they will do it properly and so finding some of these uh covid 19 palliatives in in, in warehouses you know uh, the, the no do it no because no. i saw them i there saw warehouses i see your office is your office building can you refer to your office building as a warehouse it's not okay. it's not a warehouse okay so, where we so, found them so, where, where they were found in a building in, in a, a building in a building yeah. and that, and that that level that 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 that, that quantity that, of it what quantity can you hold in a building so it is what not are, what if, are they if, doing in that what, building hold on hold on to it mm. uh you have a responsibility mm. i have a responsibility i have a conscience if there is anything wrong i would i would own up no we just oh, just no, no, an no, enlightenment no, program and to no, create but, awareness but it's very mm. important that you get it right from the outset I, that, that building does not by any stretch of imagination you cannot refer to it as a warehouse it's important it is a, it was individual it's a house or the building yes, whatever bedroom whatever house. if you had found thousands of items in the official government house uh, warehouse i would say yes there are issues now like i told you earlier on are there no issues here no 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 look to you what you found what was found in Gwari avenue like i told you is for chukun local government not being given out till that moment wait it's just being distributed look when did these items come to kaduna when did they come and again it is not federal government it is not state government it is by corporate nigeria that's why you see it is c covid meaning corporate nigeria for covid they in fact as i speak to you now the governor's forum they have put they have put out a uh or the public space a public statement because you can't have the same situation in all the states that all the governors decided to hold these items calabar in cross river kaduna taraba uh, plateau and lagos corporate nigeria did put money together but they wanted everything to go to local businesses to generate employment which is very critical so that these companies will also pick up and the economy can boom so the capacity of these companies to meet the the, the huge demands about 24 billion worth of purchases they don't have that capacity so some states are just getting theirs this is not from humanitarian affairs this is not from federal government this is not kaduna state this is from the aliko dangotes the Tony Lumelus. now back to the issue of the building there is nothing there's no record that shows that the chukun consignment that was found in that building was going to be hijacked to whatever purpose or was going to be stolen there's no record of that if by today that consignment was not moved to chukun like other local governments are also being getting theirs then we would have raised a red flag and you can be sure governor national erufai will sack the commissioner who is uh, been charged with the responsibility of getting this to chukun in the next few minutes i'm sure the pictures of distribution across the to the local governments unfortunately the people of chukun will not be getting unless the government goes into into uh, uh, its resources to get something for them so you cannot conclude because these things were found there they were not taken there in the middle of the night they were taken there in the daytime and of course 
once uh, this uh, palliative hunt started, people, oh, yes, uh, we saw them de depositing these things. On that one hour, it had been looted because it's not the quantity that building was holding. It's not, that's the point I think people must understand. The quantity in that building is nothing. It cannot go for 23 local governments. So there's nothing outward being done by Kaduna State Government. I think it's important. And if that thing was not shared, if those palliatives were not shared by today, then the commissioner would have been held responsible by the government. And as I shall speak to you, because all the other local governments, their palliatives have been taken to, their, to the various local governments. It's not something that happened in, during this crisis. So it's not like, uh, oh, let's hurry and uh, no, the, the government is uh, has been planning based on experience of how to get these items to the people who need it. That's very critical. Okay, I, I, I do I, another thing and uh, taking it away from um, the looting. The looting is condemnable, uh, so to say, and uh, it was you know uh, rule of law was not adhered to, uh, and so we condemn in its entirety what happened. But something would always stand out, and it stands out in all of this that there is hunger in the land. Are you following me? I and am if there you. is hunger in the land, it shows that uh, again, government's uh, responsibility to its people. If if Nigeria is today rated uh, <coughs> poverty capital of the world, if Nigeria today are the poor of the world, all of this is just showing that uh, so people are angry, people are vexed up, and and so would want to survive because this is turning yeah. out to be survival. As I speak to you, a friend of mine who came to my page to say she wished. She was in Kaduna to take part. I said, I would have been disappointed in you. And I am disappointed in those who took part in looting either the houses of people or in looting that building. Survival played yeah. out. No, yeah. no, it, no. It did. It, it did. Toyin. There's Toyin. hunger in the land. Toyin. Yeah, yeah it's okay, hunger in the land. Now they finished looting those, that building where those cons uh, palliatives are. So what next? There is hunger. What next? Yes. Uh, yeah. So let's fly with your argument. So what let's next fly. now? So what next? They'll go into the streets and go into everybody's houses. Where That's why we're saying condemn. No, no, no. Yes. Going with your stance. Mm. There is hunger. I am saying it shows. Yes. It's showing. There's no doubt. We deny that. Let me tell you. There's something called integrity. There is something called integrity, and I have seen it in very, very poor people. Mm. Yes, I'm being, I'm being very honest with I'm you. I'm following. Good. Yes, I've seen it in very, very poor people. I've seen it in very, very decent girls who walk, who do not do wrongs. Eh? There's hunger in the line that there are people who sell their bodies. I have seen very, very decent girls who walk, who will, who will go to labor uh, building sites to walk rather than uh, engage in prostitution. So you can take that argument, Stoyin, even you, I am sure. Take I am me very, out. very take me sure. Out of this. No, 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 no. It's important because you said there is hunger. There is hunger. You have needs. You would like to ride uh, a 2020 Camry. I'm no, sure. No, that, that's uh, not my priority. So, so good. Look, there is. Uh, I am disappointed. If if it's if if it's, if you want anybody that justifies. The looting. There's nobody justifying this. this. Well, no, no, the, on the basis on the of no, there is hunger. There is hunger in India. There is hunger in Nigeria. There is hunger everywhere. Even in the United States of America, there is hunger. Now, it is, is this not sending a wait, message? Hold on, hold on, Emmanuel. It is sending a message. All right. But what do we do? What is our response? Response now. You, you cannot justify by any stretch of imagination. No way. That based on the fact that there is hunger you want to justify looting we're saying no no we're okay, saying no. good yeah. so we need to make it clear to people that there is need dignity in labor there is need to work hard a situation where uh you won't do some jobs and you cry me and you we do jobs that we are we, we can we can every day say we are not well remunerated but we we keep doing them why because we have integrity we have character and then 
So there's no justifiable reasons for what has happened. There's no doubt there is hang hunger. And if you make the linkages in Kaduna State, before the coming of Erufai, factories were closing. And to the glory of God, he realizes that there is problem, especially because 75% of Kaduna State population are youths between the ages of 1 to 35. And every day he talks about it, his budget speech, he said, job, job, jobs. That he must create, which is, he must create, must attract industries. On that Olam Road, as we speak now, there is a Moroccan uh, fertilizer company ongoing. Dangote Pan Pujo Assembly Plant ongoing. And there are some other businesses that he is attracting. If you look at Olam, if Erufai can amplify, uh, replicate Olam eh, in Southern Kaduna and one in Northern Northern Kaduna, you can be sure. And then look at the milk project, almost uh, $200 million project that is going to bring how much into the economy of Kaduna and save Nigeria money. So Erufa is looking at the big picture, not the narrow picture, and which is why very critical for Kaduna State Government is the issue of agro-based industries. It's a, it's a pity the factory that would have been driving uh, uh, employment uh, in Southern Kaduna, Vicampro Potatoes Project, was sabotaged. You understand? But he's, he is hell-bent on getting that factory going because he needs to attack poverty and that's the way to go that's the way to go so it's we, we, we there's absolutely no doubt there is crisis and if you look at the pattern of the the the, the looting it, it's a message to us that maybe we have more poverty uh we have more poor people in southern kaduna in uh, Chukun, in Kaduna South, because we didn't see this playing out. Nobody attacked. Nobody attacked the the warehouse housing the palliatives for Igabi, which is one of the four local governments that make up Kaduna Metropolis. Okay, yeah, uh, Emmanuel, I do. Um, we'll have to go for a commercial break, and uh, we're looking at uh, what happened over the weekend in in, in Kaduna and. Uh, Con, you know, condemnable as we've said in its entirety that uh, no one had the right, you know, to take the law into their hands. And uh, we, we saw what young ones, you know, did there. It was wrong. It was wrong. And of course, um, again, we, uh, we appreciate the message that's been sent here. Yeah, that um, yes, government must look at, you know, its citizens <coughs> and find ways, you know, uh, to cushion the effect of uh, the hard moments that we're all going through. Emmanuel Ado, a public affairs analyst with us in the studios, um, putting, putting his thoughts on uh, some of the things that we saw, you know, that came out over the weekend. We'll go for a commercial break. Be back with you shortly. <laughs> uh, welcome back. It's Perspectives this morning and uh, we're looking at uh, what happened or took place over the weekend in Kaduna. It has, you know, brought us uh, to the situation where we have a curfew imposed um, in the town and of course um, we must all you know by this time be licking our wounds uh, caused by some uh, miscreants. miscreants so to say in all its uh, entirety we condemn what had happened that uh, no one you know would should take the law into their hands and of course um, again but we must look at the other you know what this the other perspectives of what this had you know taught us that uh, there are lessons to learn out of this place. It's not a situation of Kaduna alone. It's happening in some parts of, of the country. And of course, government had um, taken uh, measures to put this thing under control uh, with the uh, deputy governor of the state. The directive is that there is a curfew. Uh, acting governor. Acting governor, yes. Okay. Acting governor. Acting uh, governor. The deputy yeah. governor, acting governor, as it is today. And of course, um, measures have been taken to see to it that calm. Uh, Kaduna returns, you know, to its normalcy. Of course, um, the young ones that have been involved too, um, 
government condemns it, uh, good citizens too would condemn what had happened. But there are lessons, there are takeaways from, from these. It goes all over the all over the country. Emmanuel Ladu, a public affairs analyst, is with me in the studios. And we are just, you know, taking a look or taking a look at um, what, you know, how this happened and um, what came out of it and of course measures to be taken to guard against. At this time, for all of us, citizens of Cotton State is, is a critical period, you know, for the state. Um, don't forget that we are in, you know, uh, um, trying to, you know, find lasting solutions to the conflicts in the state, especially to return Kadunut back to its peaceful um, uh, situation and its mood that uh, everything works out well. And government has been doing a lot on that. We must not, you know, um, with our actions or inactions, uh, spoil what has been put in place to make Kaduna peaceful again. Uh, Emmanuel, I'll ask you, this may be out of, um, you know, uh, what had happened, but again, as a pointer, we COVID nineteen is a reality uh, all over the country and the world o over too. Uh, but again, this looting that we saw, you know, we saw no, no respect for distancing. Distancing was no done. respect for all the <laughs> all the protocols, you know, that have been put in place. Again, you know, these are you know pointers to health situations that. Uh, you know, for the young ones, the strong and able ones that are the engine room of any, you know, development. I, I must, I must use this opportunity mm. uh, because I was at the, I was at, at NAVDAC when the acting governor came there, and she was briefed by the, the acting director, and uh, it doesn't look good. Um, dangerous drugs, chemicals have been taken away, looted from NAVDAC uh, facilities. And um, the dangerous drugs also include uh, codeine, uh, which you know uh, what it is now to our youths. Uh, thousands of cartons of those drugs were were taken away. So for Kaduna residents, uh, if you if you need to buy drug, please <clears throat> be very very careful. Even wine, wine, uh, but, uh, cartons of wines were were looted that. Uh, you know, were counterfeited, fake, and all that. And uh, you know how <clears throat> unscrupulous uh, businessmen are, especially patent medicine store men. These boys are going to sell off these items to them, and they're going to they are going to get printers to print uh, new labels for those drugs, and um, they will make all the money. They are going to buy these things very, very cheap, cheaply from uh, these boys, and then they are going to get new labels. So, if you want to buy drugs now, you have to be very, very, very careful. Uh, in the next few days, those drugs and uh, other items will be getting uh, into shops. You have to be very, very careful. That's uh, why uh, you 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 see uh, illiteracy, you see mob action. Otherwise, uh, people wouldn't have gone to that facility. I've had all kinds of uh, questions. Why didn't NAVDAC uh, destroy those uh, uh, drugs and uh, these things? Uh, that's begging the question. Why did the people in the first place go to a facility, drugs and food agency facility? Why? In search of uh, palliatives? Why? So at times I, I wonder how some of us, uh, I, I, I don't like uh, some words, some of us reason. You understand? Why did they go to NAVDAC? That's the first question. Not why didn't NAVDAC destroy those items. But to answer that question, NAVDAC embarks on seizure of fake drugs, fake food, fake uh, water. Uh, they, they are, uh, 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 people don't know. People fake water. They, they use all kinds of water. Now, they don't, they cannot take the law onto themselves. They must go to court and get a court order before embarking on destruction of these fake and counterfeit drugs. So they have a facility. They have places where they keep these things. So why are we now putting blame on them? 
why did why were they keeping them you know you 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 get uh angry at times the way some of us ask questions that is a safe facility it's secured but of course they they breached the security and did what they did so it's very very important for people of kaduna even neighboring states to take note that some fake medicines drinks and all foods are out there and those who looted the the soya beans factory workout they must be very very careful because those are treated soya beans they are not palliatives of course i'm sure you saw people on a, a bike with a furniture a fridge and all that so if you say it's hunger um, it's about hunger you will be asking yourself what does toilet seat what does ac what does uh, uh, all the uh, furniture and go what do they have to do with hunger mm. you understand so it, it again confirms the fears of government the information that government was working on to the uh, to impose curfew that they were they were copycats who wanted some action for kaduna unfortunately our actions in kaduna are not usually like that of other places they they tend to always uh, find religious and uh, we, are, we are hopeful that one day we'll, everybody will be able to be on the same page uh, demonstrate about the same issues without it degenerating into crisis okay. uh, so, let, let me just put this uh, before i get my lines open i just put this across um well uh, in all of it again um some people were you know were caught in the net of uh, the law and so prosecution on all that happened oh the deputy the deputy uh, acting governor acting of the, uh, the yes, acting yes, governor yes. dr hadiza balari you know every day she continues to impress me she did not miss what when she was engaging with the chiefs and the uh, district heads and village heads of chukun local government she t she told them pump pump and plane you have criminals amongst your subjects but very critical for government is the return of these looted drugs and you have a mandate to ensure that you reach out to your people and ensure that they return these things and then she did promise she said because this is not about uh, palliatives even the 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 Gwari avenue like i said earlier on if by today those uh, items were not moved to chukun then the commissioner overseeing chukun would have had questions to answer but unfortunately because copycats wanted to unleash mayhem uh, the poor woman whose house was uh, ransacked the other man that i saw on channels whose doors were removed and the uh, uh, windows and every uh, item he's using to build his house were all removed so the the deputy governor has made it very clear and uh, the good thing is uh, those who thought they were they were celebrating they have they have helped the security officers with tons and tons of photographs and uh, video evidences against people who engaged in looting so i think um, uh, what they were celebrating would turn out to be to be <laughs> Uh, something that will cost some people uh, 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 wahala, if I will use that word, because the the security forces are they are putting those pictures together, they are they are putting those videos together, and then they will use those evidences, uh, pieces of evidence, to go after people individually. Uh, you know, it's a mob, a mob. Yes, if you are not uh, in any way caught, you get away with it. But the, I think she, she talked about making examples of those they can lay their hands. So people who might just be in their houses and they will see on the streets. And then uh, some of the people who looted Nema and Sema warehouse, the mattresses and the uh, roofing sheets that were brought in uh, were looted on Saturday. Um, it's, a, it's a shame uh, because, uh, again, uh, that's why I, I, I said it's... Uh, it's difficult to justify by any stretch of imagination what has happened. You cannot uh, 
justify looting of those mattresses. When there are riots, people's houses are burned, government steps in. When there is flooding and people's uh, houses are, are flooded, government steps in. When there is fire, government steps in. That's the warehouse that has also been looted. And I think it's very important. Education and information is very, very important. Um, the government maintains statutory reserves. You understand? And these are all places people are saying, oh, there are palliatives. No. Palliatives are well marked out, especially this, um, this last batch that is about being shared now. They are coalition against COVID-19. Corporate Nigeria. Corporate Nigeria. So you can't have uh, uh, one building in Kaduna State with some palliatives and then Jaws and then uh, Plateau State and then Cross River, Adamawa and all the places. You can't have all the governors being criminally minded. I think that's very, very important. And it's important for people to go with, uh, to read the... No, Tony, I think we, we, we need to uh, keep the lines. Let's finish these conversations. No, uh, I, yeah, I, if I, you... I be, like because to, I want to... No, no, I want to... Yeah. Yes, I understand, yeah. but it's important we 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 get these things we can always come back now if you look at the at the at the uh, statement by the governor's forum nigerian governor's forum by the public relations manager uh abdul razak belo bakindo if you see what if you if you read let me let me just say this the nigerian governor's forum have since the answers demonstrations started held several meetings to address underlying concerns and members have aligned themselves with the call for justice leading to the setting up a judicial panel you see so that is first level then a lot of information circulating there is need for people to cross check and get the facts you understand the ngf that's the nigerian governors forum re-emphasizes and corrects the impression that palliatives found in warehouses that were broken into in Lagos were kept in storage for members of the society, especially vulnerable. You understand? They are not hoarded. That's his words. They are not hoarded. That information that they are hoarded is inaccurate, entirely erroneous and untrue and unfortunately mischievous. Hmm? So, for the avoidance of doubt, some of the palliatives had the COVID stamp embossed on them, meaning that their source is unambiguous. Kaduna State has conducted itself creditably. The palliative is shared, it bought with the money of the state government that was diverted, and that of some of the contributions, 20% contribution by both the commissioners and the public office holders and state civil public servants. That phase had been concluded until this one came. And even at that, as we speak, the 22 other local governments by today, the sharing of these palliatives will commence. Unfortunately, only Chukun, which has been vandalized. So, that is not a government that was going to keep these things back for to what end okay we are not running in, uh, run, okay, are not going into, uh, into an election let me quickly you know bring in the people here um again what happened over the weekend we we stand to condemn it that uh, there was no way that uh, you could allow all of that to happen and of course government uh, you know with the oath of office that the governor and uh, his executive are taking to was you know to protect citizens and of course their properties too but let's take your thoughts on on this condemnable uh, that's that's the position to put at it yeah and we must not allow all of this to continue to go on uh, what are your thoughts here and uh, talk to us on numbers 081 40989 or 070 87 hello good morning Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Yes. Um, 
I am Mama Emmanuel from Narai. Mama Emmanuel, okay, let's hear you. Um, I'm hearing what we are discussing. We know that if the priorities are meant for local government, each local government has a soul in its own facility. I would like to say whoever God does priorities to that of the day God did the wrong thing. Okay. The priority should have gone to the local government headquarters where it was going to be used. Okay. Please make them let us not we should discuss facts, not politics. Mama Emmanuel, yes. we got you on that. I, I'm, I'm taking your question. Uh, you know um, uh, what you just said. Uh, yes. I'm going to put that across. We, we got you on that. I, I'll take another call. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah. My name. Yeah. My name is from the Deputy Examiner. Let's hear you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I have to commend you, you know, for because since I'm trying to say, and um, have been keeping our health cool because of all what you have been saying that made me about to cool down our temper and trying to listen to you. But today program, it seems that an important view standing from your face speaking more of the government. But secondly, they walk the away what the way has opposite business. That's why the cannot say government. You have what? Uh, comrade Emmanuel. Uh, sorry, Comrade Gabriel. Um you said we have what? I say we have a warehouse. Kadna State government has a central store opposite the I think the suspicions there that are why are they throwing this in Bali Avenue. Okay, all right. Why why there? Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. I'll, I think, I'll take one more. I'll take one more and then I'll come back to my guest here. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Ah, look, look. Your, your name again, please. I said, Oh, God. I'm having a problem with this line. Okay. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Paul. Good you. morning. Quickly. Uh, good morning to your guest. Yes, quickly. Yeah, I'm the engineer, man. Okay. Honestly, uh, what happened is unfortunate. Mm. And I condemn the looting of uh, personal belongings of people that people went and began to vandalize. I condemn it. And I have to make it. Honestly, I'm disappointed with your guest. If a material, a palette was provided to be shared, to be shared, I stand to be corrected. This palette, the purpose of it was to be shared to the people. Why keeping it? If he says that. Were you following us? You know, were you following us from the beginning of this program, Emmanuel? What I'm saying is this. No, were you following us? Have you been following from the start of the program? I, I've been following you from the office. And you got what my, my guest said. But what I'm saying is this. If those politics was meant to be shared, why did they lock it in, in, in private houses? You did not get that beat from him. Then let me just go to uh, my guest. Engineer. He's just unfortunate. All right, uh, engineer he Emmanuel. Should, I'm not in support of what they, what they, what they did. Oh. The government should have shared it as soon as those politics came. They well, have the government has its own plans. Uh, uh, engineer Emmanuel, it's, <laughs> the government would have its own timetable, its schedule, you know, in this, of distribution. Uh, and, that's uh, the part. People are complaining that they are hungry. Okay. Are let, let, let's, get, let's get to my guest now. Um, Mama Emmanuel, Comrade Gabriel. The, all, and then, all of them is the same issue. Mm. I location I, yes location yes. Mm. look um I, I i think yes there is a problem about trust credibility across you know but like i was telling somebody it's a lot easier for us most times to point a finger at someone and four is pointing back at you i have no issues with the credibility of kaduna state government they have gone out, issued these palliatives to all the local governments. And if the person overseeing, we don't know. I expect at certain points, the commissioner will speak. He knows the best reasons. He's done, he's done, he's done, he's taking part in the previous efforts to get these palliatives to the people. So he knows the best the reason best why those items were kept here and you cannot judge government if it's a, over a hundred 
over a hundred, a score of hundred, and you have issue with just one local government. And like I said, Mama Ima, if you are listening to me, if by today those those boys did not loot that place on Saturday, and by today that commissioner does not take those palliatives to Chukun local government, then there would have been issues. But fortunately, uh, they've raided it. And so Chukun, unfortunately, unless the governor uh, in his company. Mama Emmanuel is also saying that there is a storehouse or there should be a warehouse at the That's local government. Right. Because they, these items have been moved to the various local governments. Like I said again, the deputy governor has made it clear there was no hoarding. I'm sure she has spoken to the commissioner in charge. Why did you keep this in Gwari Avenue in that building? And based on his answers, the acting governor was bold enough to say there is no evidence of hoarding. If this is towards the election, you will say, oh, they want to divert it towards the election. There is nothing in sight. They are not keeping it for only APC members or they are keeping it for PDP or for anybody. But I will say, Kaduna State, in terms of uh, credibility, 100%. Because the items have been distributed. They were not found in that central warehouse that people are talking about. They, so there is no F, there's no, and the governor has explained through the acting governor. They have explained that they are expecting a second wave. London, United Kingdom is shut down as we speak now. Uh, America, highest uh, record in a day. Eh? In terms of number of uh, affected cases and we all know the hues and cries by the public servants when they were their 20 percent was deducted look nobody is asking how kaduna has funded all all it is doing in terms of this covid in terms of uh, buying the test uh, uh, materials in terms of treating people in terms of feeding them in terms of building new hospitals infectious hospitals Governor National Airify has concentrated attention in building new hospitals, infectious hospitals. They are, dif uh, they are different from normal hospitals because they expect, the, the anticipation is that there will be a second wave. And then we, we might talk about uh, uh, personnel, but at least there will be places where they can be taken, where people who get infected can be taken to. to. So all these as far as I'm concerned, Kaduna has done well. They've distributed uh, the warehouse that was looted. Uh, the building that was looted is not a warehouse. It's a building, two bedroom. I was there, uh, and it cannot contain. It cannot contain a 911 uh, uh, truck load full of uh, uh, Indomie. You know how bulky the cartons are, and. Uh, uh, the other items. So I I believe the deputy governor that there was no efforts to to hold. There was no efforts to uh, 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 to to steal. Now, if we must tell ourselves the truth, those who also think those items were being stolen, why didn't they <laughs> to show a higher a higher degree of uh, responsibility. Why did they take 10 bags? Why did they take 10 bags? Why didn't you say, okay, these items belong to us? Yes, but to the community, I and they take one, just one bag. If they distributed these items, I will get a bag of <coughs> maize. I'll get a bag of this. I'll get a carton of Indomie. What is but, wrong? But, is wrong but, but you still... You steal the common wealth that you say belongs to people that was being kept and you took more than what would normally have come to you. So what 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 what's what's your we all, we all have agreed that it yeah, was so, it so, was wrong. So uh, 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 yes. so that we all I have think, agreed think, that it was So I, I think it's important we 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 let the people yes. know obey the curfew. Uh it's in our interest that Cardinal does not burn. Uh 
stay home, enjoy your family. Yeah, uh, I think it's important. And that will just be about the size yeah. of it on the program perspectives today. Um, let's be law abiding and, of course, uh, let's try to keep Kaduna um, working. And, of course, again, do not do anything against the law. Uh, that was Emmanuel Ado, a public affairs analyst, sharing thoughts with us on how, you know, what happened over the weekend, government's position about all of it, and, of course, responsibility of citizens too in all of this. Let's stay within the law. And of course, uh, Dr. Bagaya, thank you for connecting us with the people. Wisdom, we thank you for putting us in the pictures. We'll come back with perspectives tomorrow. Good morning.